Hello and welcome to this edition of the Farrell Phelps Show where my guest today is Mr. Clarence White and Mike Frazier. Welcome to the show guys. Thank you. Pleasure to be here. Absolutely, absolutely. Now I brought these guys on the show because I wanted to talk about something that's very important. Self-esteem. Self-esteem is very important and Mike is a counselor and Mr. Clarence is a life coach. So I figured you guys would be experts when it comes to the uh, topic of self-esteem and how it affects people and things like that. Uh, Mike, I want to talk to you first. <laughs> I was skipping around. Uh, but uh, being a counselor, I'm sure you see a lot of different situations that you have to deal with from that perspective. What is one of the, the, the things that you see most commonly when it comes to issues uh, for counseling as it relates to self-esteem? Uh, mostly, uh, well, well, and I'll tell you some of the counseling that I've gotten into. Uh, it's. Uh, I, I do CPS parenting classes, and so of course, uh, getting into counseling them a lot of times is uh, coming from abusive relationships. Um, usually, it's the uh, the woman that has been abused, and it end up um, causing low self esteem. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, and a lot of times they don't realize uh, where it has stemmed from, and actually what they are suffering from. Okay, as it relates to their esteem. Exactly. <clears throat> One of the things that I've uh, learned in doing the research about self-esteem is that generally, uh, when you talk about children that are in Child Protective Services, a lot of times there's a reason that they're in Child Protective Services. Exactly. Because some adult has done something to right. cause them to be in Child Protective Services. Right. Right. Well, one of the things that I've actually learned is that when a child is abused or mistreated, generally that person uh, that does the abuse has been mistreated in their life. And it's exactly. basically passed on. Sure. And it's like a domino effect. It's a domino effect. And as a result, you see... Yeah, it's, it's almost a, a generational curse that's passed on. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's sort of like when... I, I, I talk to people all the time uh, when, when they say, see me, they say, you are your, your, your father's son. You just... Okay. Talking to me is like talking to my dad. Well, uh, that leads from uh, even going to my musical background. My father was into music, okay. so it was passed on to me, and it's no different from when uh, bad things occur in the family. If, if mom was abused, then that's going to be passed on to the child. Right. And uh, the, the crazy thing about this generation and what's happening now is uh, what used to be abnormal has now become normal. Mm. Um, yeah. Calling a woman a bee back in the day you would have got cut. Very offensive, yes. Uh, absolutely. Yes, but now it's, uh, some women have actually told me they don't feel like it, that they love if they pretty much not being abused. Because wow. of a term of endearment almost. Mm -hmm. so. Exactly. Yeah, yeah and it's, 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 uh, it's a sickness, if you will. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and so getting them to realize that, you, you, no, this is not normal. You uh, deserve better, right? And and having them to realize who they are, mm -hmm. uh, and and knowing your own worth, right? Uh, that's and, everything, right there. That's knowing everything. your own worth. Yes, yes. Uh, that's 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 everything. If you don't understand who you are and whose you are, mm -hmm. it, it becomes a uh, a very very dysfunctional situation. Right. Absolutely. Right. You know, that you are so right about that. And I, I always say uh, we need to know what we deserve and what we don't deserve. Exactly. Sure. And it helps us to determine what we're going to deal with in our lives. Exactly. Uh, yeah. And whether it's time to exit or keep on, you know, whatever. <laughs> keep on going. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. That's, that's the terminology, the new terminology that the uh, new generation is, is using is by Felicia. That's my that, Yeah, that's it. Bye, bye, Felicia. Felicia. Yeah. yeah, like, I'm you, getting up out of here. You got to know words. when to I'm say gone. bye, Felicia. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. We all need to know when to say bye, Felicia. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Now, I want to uh, fast forward to you, uh, Mr. Clarence. Now, from a, a uh, perspective of a life coach, now, I want to ask you this question. When you see people that are, are affected by different circumstances that affect self-esteem, yes, sometimes it's based on what we see in society and what we see in social media. How do you feel like social media has played a part in self-esteem? It has absolutely caused um, a negative impact on people's identity. Um, because, you know, growing up during the era that uh, I came up in the 80s, you know, 
know, we, we set our examples of who we want to be based off of what we saw on television or magazines. Right. Uh, and even that content was limited or restricted or regulated. Right. Well, so much of social media and the different sites that are available now to teenagers, young adults, and even mature adults, it's unregulated. Yeah. So you mm. see everything. Yeah. And if you're using that as your model or your litmus <coughs> test or your plumb line to define who you are, then you will almost absolutely get it wrong. And the reason being is mm. no two of us really look alike. You know, there's yeah. a small group that may have similar features, but really by large, there's more difference than there is similarities. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, for me, when I had the opportunity to teach, I centered around the aspect of love. How do you define love? It's when we misdefine love, or when we get that definition wrong, that we generally find the, the source of all of our problems, be it self-esteem or any other deal. It's when we don't know how to define love or what love looks like, even to love ourselves, mm -hmm. is when we begin to look to other things to define it for us, and we get it wrong. Right. So in my opportunities to sit with people, I help them reshape or reframe the ideology of love to get back to yeah. loving themselves. So. Wow, wow. I think that was very well said and definitely something you guys can walk away with uh, who's hearing uh, what you're saying. That's, that's really something. You know, uh, self-esteem, Man, it, it is so huge, and, I, and I, as I was researching last night, and I was going down a list of seven things that are similar in, with, with uh, people mm -hmm. that have low self-esteem, I actually identified some things in myself. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I was like, wow, I didn't know. Yeah. You know, yeah. <laughs> you know it, it was interesting uh, when I began to dissect uh, the different things that are associated with self-esteem, mm -hmm. um, and to uh, come to some self-realization for my, on my mm -hmm. own. Yeah. as it relates to myself, and just being transparent right, right, right. now. Um, but one of the things was uh, always questioning yourself, or second-guessing yourself, wondering if I'm doing this right. right. That second-guessing type thing. Um, always being concerned about what others are thinking. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. you know? yeah. I find myself being like that sometimes. I find myself like, oh, I wonder what are they thinking. Even if it's an expression that somebody might have on their face, I find myself, oh, did I do something wrong with something? You know, right. I, I find myself like that. And you know, it was funny this morning, uh, when uh, a friend of ours, Barbara, walked in, she had a, a certain look on her face, and I was like, oh, man, something ain't right with Barbara. You know what I mean? I'm like, okay, what's going on? You know, I, I just go into that mode, not to catch myself, man, uh, but I like to be transparent when I have these types of right. conversations right. and talk about myself as well because it's my truth, mm -hmm. yeah. you know? Yeah. Uh, and I think if we're all honest, we can all find something within ourselves right. Right. that may be challenged a little bit when it comes to esteem. But even that is not necessarily what you describe as looking to others for definition or second guessing ourselves, it's not necessarily a bad thing. It's the map it's who you look to to measure that, you know, your your second guess by or who you look to to say if I'm right or wrong. As Mike was alluding to to earlier, who you belong to. When you for me I'm a Christian mm -hmm. and I set my measurements by the life of Jesus Christ. So if I look based my decisions of right and wrong based off the life that Jesus lived, I'm okay with that second guess. Okay. Or I had an outstanding mother. I had a phenomenal grandmother. If I measure my actions and my words by what my mother or my grandmother did, then I'm okay with that. If I go, well, will my mother approve of this? And I second guess myself for that, I'm okay. But imagine the households like Mike has dealt with, with who have been in CPS and you know, I work with women in a prison recidivism program who have been who have three things in common, uh, incarceration, drug abuse, and some form of involvement with the sex trade industry. Okay. What's common amongst all their stories is they didn't have a lot of positive influences in their lives. Right. So what they strove to do, like anyone else, to live up to someone else's standards right. or to be affirmed or appreciated by that group of people, imagine the things they had to do in order to be affirmed. Yeah. Right, right. It's almost but, like the blind leading the blind. Exactly. So when they begin to second guess themselves, the, the people they guessed against weren't quite healthy themselves. <laughs> right. So their decisions, in turn, were not healthy. Right. So your template was was bad already. You started from a, from a bad foundation. Which right. goes back to the generational. Which goes back to generational. You know, I'm enjoying this conversation. I'm sure everybody else is enjoying this conversation as well. We're going to be back in just a moment. You guys stick around with more.
welcome back to this edition of the Feral Felt Show. My wonderful guest today is Mr. Mike Frazier and Clarence White. Welcome back, guys. Thank you. Absolutely. Now, we're talking about yeah. self-esteem when we left off mm -hmm. and uh, things like that. Now, when we talk about self-esteem, there are so many different components that cause a person to have low self-esteem. I want to ask you, Clarence, what are some of those things that cause people to have self-esteem? Low self-esteem. Low self-esteem. Misidentity. Uh, misappropriation of their identity, which uh, one of the things that generally causes that are negative experiences, self-experiences whether it's something that someone else has caused to their lives or, or bad, poor choices or decisions that have caused certain things or negative outcomes for them lives themselves. Uh, it could be growing up in difficult or poor circumstances or negative environments uh, that have caused them to see things differently. Um, and certainly I, I would add to that um, unfortunate circumstances. And I'll give you an example of that. Um, losing a child and then starting to blame themselves. Mm. Uh, losing a job, having a promising <coughs> career, and then all of a sudden being displaced. Starting to blame themselves for that. Um, those are some, some of the reasons I think self-esteem comes into play. Yes, I totally agree. Mm -hmm. Totally agree. Okay. And I want to ask you, uh, Mike, how important is parenting to self-esteem? Mm -hmm. Wow. Um, what's interesting about that uh, question that you uh, uh, just ask. Most of the time, it, 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 a child's low self-esteem starts w from the parents. Mm -hmm. You're stupid. You'll never be anything. You're gonna be just like your father. Bad labels. Uh, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, and it and it takes. You, you have to understand there's power in words. Absolutely. Um, you, you know, we can speak things into existence, mm -hmm. and so uh, parenting is very, very important. I tell people all the time, my uh, uh, mother and father uh, is still teaching me from the grave. Uh, matter of fact, my uh, grandmother sings to me every now and then from the grave. Is that right? Yeah, when my back get up against the wall, I hear uh, singing a song I believe I run on and see what the end is going to be. Yeah. So I... Um, uh, so that goes back to your question about uh, parenting, um, encouraging that child, mm -hmm. um, uh, what you allow the child to see in the home right. uh, can lead to low self-esteem. Uh, the way uh, parents um, deal with one another uh, as parents, uh, all of that uh, can affect um, how the child looks at themselves and how they uh, kind of look at, at, at the low self-esteem part of life. Right. right. Yeah. I totally agree. And when you talk about words being spoken, it's so important that we speak words that esteem a child. Exactly. Uh, as opposed to words that will tear down a child. Right. And you know, we've all heard the old adage, you know, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never harm me, <laughs> which I have come to realize in life, the biggest lie and with, that's told. the right. biggest lie yeah. ever told. Yeah. Words do hurt. And yeah. words stick with you well yeah. after that moment that they're spoken. Exactly. You and know, once it's out there, you can't get it back. You can't right. get it back. Uh, I, I'm, I'm dealing with a, uh, <laughs> a, a similar situation with me and my brother. Okay. Uh, we, we haven't spoken in over uh, five years, and it's due to some of the things that um, he said to me. Yeah, uh, and and you can some things you can't uh, you can't change, and mm -hmm. once it's out there, uh oh, shoulda, coulda, woulda is a little bit too late. Absolutely. And uh, so it, it it that has hunted our relationship. Yeah. 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 So you have to be careful with what mm -hmm. you say to people. And that, and that's so important, you know, because we have to take we first no not take, but we have to understand the power. Of words, yes, sir. We have to understand the power of words, and the power to build and the power to destroy. Yes. And when we know the difference, why would we destroy instead of build? Impulse, um, pain, pain. You know, <laughs> pain. Hurt people, hurt people. Right. So it's a reaction. Uh, sometimes yeah. knee jerk. Sometimes intentional. Right. You hurt me. I'm going to hurt you. Mm -hmm. um, but a lot of times it's reactionary. You know? Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and uh, again, uh, understanding the uh, power of 
your words, being able to, uh, uh, just like you can speak, speak blessings, you can speak curses. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I remember my father used to say one of his favorite songs, he was a quartet guy, one of his favorite songs, uh, I think he said it was the Violin Airs put out, and they put out a song called A Pink Tornado, okay. talking about your tongue. Mm. <laughs> wow! The pink tornado, and, wow. and, and that's that, that that speaks volumes. Yes, because we have uh, spoke things and we speak things into existence, and um, you, you know, even uh, from the standpoint of saying, uh, if somebody asks you, if this brother come to me and say, I want to borrow some money, instead of me saying, No, I'm not going let you borrow the money mm -hmm. we'll lie and say I ain't I don't have any mm -hmm. money mm -hmm. and, and and then you yeah. start looking at your bank account you done spoke that into existence mm. now you're mm. broke what a lie you see mm. you you have to watch what you say mm. my grandmother used to wow. call me and used to say hey baby how you doing I would say grandma I, I feel like I, I I think I'm coming down with a cold <laughs> I think I'm trying to come down with a cold she said keep trying you'll catch it you'll get Mm. You, 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 you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Sometimes we speak things into existence. Mm -hmm. And so you have to be careful when you do that with, with your child. If something just came to mind that sometimes people use words negatively because that's the only power they have. Mm -hmm. um, words are powerful, period. And so if I don't have a title or a position or some form, other form of authority, but I know that I'm affected, surgical almost with my words mm. and if I if my only way of getting attention is negative the negative attention is still attention it's better than no right? attention at all so if, if it, that's the only power I have then I'll use it you're right you know and that's that's some people's story wow mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. wow and they don't care about the damage they've done <clears throat> no. to mm. anyone because they damage goods and so, it goes back to what you said earlier yeah a and lot of times yeah misery loves company so mm -hmm. yeah. you know if I'm down here might as well bring you down here with me yeah yeah, yeah. 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 Wow. And <laughs> yeah, and that's real that's real talk. Yeah. Yeah. The yeah. power of the tongue. The power of the tongue it's and the power of, of, of who you link up with. Yeah. Now going into twenty sixteen, I was telling some people the other day, I'm cutting some people off. Mm -hmm. I think I'm gonna put on my, my voicemail, uh, hello, this is Mike Frazier. Going into twenty sixteen, I am making some changes. If I don't call you back, you are one of those changes. Because <laughs> I'm expecting <laughs> I'm expecting some blessings in 2016, you, you know, and who I'm hooked up with, I can't take them into 2016 yeah. hooked up yeah. because yeah. if I got an anchor, oh, oh, we going. It, it, you, you understand <laughs> what I'm saying? If he if he pulling me down and yeah. I'm trying to get to the promised land, right. Come on now. then that makes it even harder. Mm -hmm. So I might need to cut him in my book. One of my chapters is to be elevated, you got to be separated. Mm. Okay, so Say that again. To be elevated, you got to be separated. Yeah. <laughs> so all right, he's trying to make me shout right now. I'm going to run around here. So I mean, that's power. Yeah, that's you, real. That's power in your association as well. Oh right? my God. Yeah. Who, who you associate yourself with tells you can almost literally predict where you're going in your life. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, they tell you to always associate yourself with people who are doing just as well as you are, if not necessarily better, better, better. Mm -hmm. because that's the direction you want to grow in. Exactly. There you go. But so many of us find ourselves attached to people who. Um, embody parasites or leeches. Mm. They're only hanging on to us because of what they can get from us. Exactly. Not because they're trying to grow with us. Mm. Right. And then there's the ones worse than that. They're hanging on to us so that we can't grow. Right. And mm. we got to be careful of all of those types of people. Yeah. Now, we're wow. talking about self-esteem though, right? So we've we got to be careful about how we let those people go. We let them go and tell them, it's for your good too. Because yeah. I believe in you maybe more than you believe in yourself. Mm. So I'm going to give you a chance to stand on your own legs. Now really, I'm helping them, but I'm helping myself too, because exactly. I'm going to move on. And we're going to talk a little bit more about you moving on in just a minute. When we come back with more of the Feral Felt Show, you guys stick around. We'll be back in just a moment. Show with my wonderful guests, Mr. Mike Frazier and Clarence White. Welcome back, guys. Thank you. Glad to be here. We are having some good dialogue about <laughs> self-esteem, um, 
letting go right. and things of that nature. And you were talking about letting go a moment ago. Uh, tell me a little bit more about that letting go thing. Well, essentially, it's letting go with a soft landing, hoping to not do any additional damage to that person as you're letting them go. Uh, it's sort of releasing them to be their best them, right? Mm. Without them having to live in your identity or your shadow. Um, at the same time, protecting yourself from being hindered. Um, but, you know, that may not always be possible. You know, some people may not accept and receive that well. Go, huh? Right. So, it, but if you can, try that approach first. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, there's nothing wrong with letting go. No. You know, and there's an analogy that I always use. It's, uh, the analogy is, if you're a five-year-old kid, the clothes you wear as a five-year-old kid, they were designed to fit a five-year-old kid. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But be, be, when you become a teenager, the clothes that you once wore as a five-year-old kid no longer fit. Right. The same thing applies to people. There are some people when we grow, we have to let them go, and it's okay. Yeah, yeah you have to know uh, when to let them go, and uh, I, I definitely agree with uh, Clarence and, and uh, what he said about how you letting people go. I, in my classes a lot, I, I tell people, you have to make sure you close the chapter mm -hmm. Uh, in, in, in the way you close the chapter uh, of this relationship would determine how the next chapter will end up. Uh, but a lot of times we, we do, we run from relationships and we just never close that chapter mm -hmm. not understanding that <clears throat> that's luggage that you're yeah. dragging along into the next relationship. Mm. So that's why a lot of new relationships don't work because we've never closed this chapter. Mm -hmm. And so um, it goes back into that self-esteem and, and Absolutely. not understanding Absolutely. this chapter and this luggage, mm -hmm. uh, all the drama that comes with them and what they got, they I'm dragging it along to this next chapter. Right. It, it, it speaks <coughs> uh, again, like you said, the self-esteem, a person being afraid right? You're being fearful to let something go while you move on. You know clearly that yeah. you've been mm -hmm. called to move on to something different, but you're so comfortable where you've been because it's what you know. There you and go. you're so afraid of the unknown that you don't leave what that's you have it. for what you what your purpose to receive. Yeah. And that's just damage to you, again, to mm -hmm. you and that relationship. It's like this one. If you're coming into a, a new relationship with me, I tell them, Feel comfortable to unpack. Unpack your luggage here. Because I want to know everything that you're carrying and everything that you brought into this relationship with me. Because there's some things that we may need to discard of. Mm -hmm. That's first and foremost. Mm -hmm. Second, I need you to feel comfortable that you're in a safe place and that you can show me all of you. You can only do that if you fully unpack. Right? right. And then thirdly, once that is empty, if there's anything that needs to be filled in or anything that needs to be improved, we're going to trust God to do that for the both of us. Mm. But we can't do any of that until you unpack. So well, you got to let go. Wow. A, a lot of people, uh, and I, I agree with that, but a lot of people, they're just not there. They don't know how true. Uh, to, to, to let go. I, uh, I just, um, not too long ago, uh, got out of a, a relationship years uh, to come to the end of this relationship to realize that I never knew this woman. Mm -hmm. uh, because of uh, and some things that date back to her childhood, mm -hmm. uh, I, I, and and what she didn't understand, if you would have um, communicated communicated with me, I would have known how to love you mm -hmm. differently. I didn't understand uh, then uh, when we would get into arguments. If I even halfway mentioned about leaving her, mm -hmm. she would get very defensive and, and, and almost physical. Fear, wow. fear of abandonment. Right. Yes. Wow. But then, uh, months before we make the final departure, um, <clears throat> she says to me, I was molested as a child. Um, my father died uh, when I was a, a little girl. My mother sold me out for all of her men. And so she's mm -hmm. never had a male uh, Positive, uh, yeah, positive in her role life, role, huh? and, and and so and so you you've been molested by a male. You your father dies, mm -hmm. and, and 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 it's just and your mama sell you out for 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 a man, mm -hmm. and and so now 
that's still following me. Yeah. And she didn't know how to come into the relationship, uh, if you will, naked. Mm. Just to, to say, hey, this is what I've gone through. Uh, I was uh, totally uh, open with her and transparent about who I am. Um, I would notice when we would get into conversations that she would always say, I don't like talking about myself. I should have ran then, but I didn't. I stayed, <laughs> not understanding what was going on, but years and years of us dealing with each other on and off, and we come to the end of it, and then she comes Open clean. Up. Well, too much has been done mm -hmm. at that point. You, you, you know. Yeah. It is the perfect example of what you just shared of a person who had healthy self-esteem mm -hmm. and one who did not have healthy self-esteem. Mm -hmm. You were able to completely unpack and share your story because you know who you are. Right. Right. And you're secure in who you are. Mm -hmm. Failures and successes. Right. But right. she was not. Right. She had so much fear that if she would have shared her story, you'd have left. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And so, how do we help people get beyond that place of fear to loving themselves so much, finding their identity in something greater than themselves, so that if I do share my story with a Mike Fraser, and he does choose not to engage in a relationship with me, I know I'll be okay. You're right, mm -hmm. right. Because you, that's essentially the decision you made. The scripture tells us that perfect love casts out all fear, right? So what that tells us is that the polar opposites are not love and hate, it's love and fear. Mm -hmm. Either you're in love or you're afraid. We need to get people from that box of fear mm -hmm. over to a place of love so that they can love themselves and then love others. The second commandment was to love my neighbor as myself. Mm -hmm. I can't love someone else until I know how to love myself. And that's a lot of the mm -hmm. problem. We, we a lot of them, a don't lot love of themselves. Don't. Yeah. yeah, and and I, I I try to tell people all the time. I say it's not arrogant that I have in myself. I'm just confident and I know who I am. Mm -hmm. When I wake up every morning and I get dressed, I pop my own collar and say, "Boy, you looking good." Because if I don't celebrate myself, you're not going to celebrate. Come anymore. on now. You understand? And that's the self-esteem. Yeah. That's good you have the yeah. self-esteem to do that. Yeah, so I know who I am. Mm -hmm. That's why I, sometimes I am quick to say, "Bye, Felicia." Because you're not just because you miserable. Right. Don't try to I'm now I'm going to try to help you. Right. But if you some people reject that. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I'm not going to let you bring me down right you, you you know and so we a lot of people got to understand who you attach yourself to mm -hmm. you have to be very very careful understand this if you um, if you're not a smoker mm -hmm. and you hang out with people that smoke either like you're going to stop them from smoking or oh, they yeah. going to start you to smoke and it's, 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 so misery loves company. Yes, it does. So we have to be careful with who we link up with mm -hmm. because that can determine the course uh, that your life will uh, take. Absolutely. Yeah. I totally agree. And, you know, one of the things that I want to add to that is in order for us to heal, mm -hmm. we have to keep it real. Yeah. That's right. You it's know, true. You, can't, yeah. you can't go to an auto mechanic saying that I'm having problems with my motor when it's actually your tire that you have the issue with. Right. So if you actually have an issue with that tire, tell the truth about that tire. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, in order to heal, we got to keep it real. Mm -hmm. We got to tell the truth. We're going to be back in just a moment. You guys stick around with more of the Feral Phelps Show and my wonderful guests. Show. We have a very interesting conversation today about self-esteem and the things that affect people and uh, how they interact in life based on the situation and circumstances they've been in. I wanted to, to ask you a, a, a personal question, Mike, uh, because you suffered a very tragic situation in your life. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, having lost your entire family in a flood. Ten years ago to the day, an accident in the floodwaters of Five Mile Creek killed his mother, father, fiance, two-year-old daughter, and nephew. Frazier was the lone survivor. At one time. At one time. Yeah. How has that impacted your life? Uh, 
it it has had its ups and downs. Uh, I was 24 when it happened. Uh, so to to lose my present family and to have lost my future family all at one time, to lose a mother, father, fiance, two-year-old daughter, and nephew all at one time was a heart pill to swallow. I tell people all the time, I'm, I think I'm still trying to swallow that pill. Uh, to make matters worse um, was my, my family um, did not support me. Uh, some even accused me of setting an accident up for insurance money. Uh, so that took me to a very dark place. Yeah. Um, and if it had not been for the grace of God, mm. uh, have you ever heard somebody say they tried to lose their mind? I tried to lose my mind. Yeah, I can imagine. And God said no. Uh, I thought about committing suicide, uh, but God said no. And uh, it, it you, you know, you just, what, what I have come to realize, you have to be very careful with the way you are going through your storm. Mm -hmm. Because the way you are going through your storm mm -hmm. can sometimes determine how the outcome comes out. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, it, it, <laughs> I was talking to a friend of mine on, uh, on the way here, and I said, I, I wondered if God ever came to his so-called people and said, what if your blessing <laughs> was uh, dependent on how great your praise was. Oh. Mm. What size blessing would you get? So while you're going through the storm, what if that the, the, the person that you are and what's really in you, if, if that determines how your blessing is going to come to you? Uh, I never turn my back on God. Mm -hmm. I never, I didn't understand him at the time. Right. Uh, but I never got to the point of saying, there is no God. Mm -hmm. I tell people I was hurt, but I wasn't crazy. Uh, and I'm grateful for my upbringing. I, I, my grandparents were pastors. Mm -hmm. uh, my father was a head deacon and a singer of a quartet group, and my mother was born and raised in the church. She was a prophetess. Okay. Uh, and and I, I mean, so I had a strong family background. And that and was your foundation. That was my foundation. And that's, I, I'm here today uh, because God is real. And uh, there was sometimes that I would question whether God was real, if this thing was real, because when my back was up, to get, uh, up against the wall, the devil took advantage of it, and, and, and he said, now where is your God? If God loved you, he would not allow me to, to, to let this storm come your way right. and to, for you to lose your child. Mm -hmm. But uh, I, I capitalized on uh, the devil saying God al allowed it to happen, and it took me back to Job. There was a conversation between uh, God and the, and the devil about Job. And I just believe that was a conversation that, that was had between the enemy and, and God before God allowed that storm to come my way. I'm not leaving this earth until it's my time. But through faith and friends, he pulled through, wrote a book about surviving tragedy, and dedicated his life as a musician to helping others in similar despair. And the Bible say all things work together for the good of them. Mm -hmm. And some kind of way, this doesn't work for my good. It don't feel good. Right. But it's working for my good. Mm. So uh, I'm the man that I am today because of what I went through. I tell people that, that when I come into their lives, I say, your life will never be the same. Because you meet Mike Frazier. I know who I am. This day was predestined. I went through then.
mm. for my future, which is now. I had a date with Destiny back then and I didn't know. But here it is. Mm. Wow. <laughs> Wow. Powerful testimony. Wow. Very powerful testimony. Yeah. And that's just one of your testimonies. Yeah. Now you had another one that was quite scary for you when you were actually uh, face to face with a armed robber who actually took your vehicle. How often have you ever heard of somebody getting carjacked and the guys that did the carjacking go and kill themselves? Pulled into this Lancaster apartment complex to visit a friend and was immediately carjacked by Christopher Faison, Kendrick Kennedy, and a third unidentified man. I was expecting for him to shoot me point blank, but I think when I grabbed a barrel and pushed him, that kind of threw him, his balance off. Several shots were fired at him. And he just kept running and got away. Frazier is death's escape artist. Almost 10 years ago to the day, an accident in the floodwaters of Five Mile Creek killed his mother, father, fiance, two-year-old daughter and nephew. Frazier was the lone survivor. I'm not leaving this earth until it's my time. And as he heard of his attacker's fate, and immediately I started thinking about their family. Yeah, it was, Tell uh, us a little bit more about that, man. I know that it, had to, to affect you. It's, it's crazy because when, when I lost my family, that was May 5th, 1995. Uh, there was five people in the car that got killed. Mm -hmm. uh, so the, the, there's that five. So right. let's fast forward to 2005. Yeah, right. May of, of 2005. Mm -hmm. um, I was carjacked by three young men. Shot at six times. I could hear the bullets flying by me. Mm. Within 20 minutes of them carjacking me, two of them lost control of the car that they took from me and uh, killed themselves in. Ended up hitting a tree, I think it was, hitting, wasn't it? Hitting the tree, bounced off, off of the tree into a telephone pole, and uh, they, they, they were killed. And what's crazy is where I was at, I was in some apartments. Uh, once, the, uh, fire, uh, once the policeman got finished uh, speaking with me, uh, I was able to go to where the accident was because uh, my keys and everything was in the car, I could not get into my own house, so I had to try to go retrieve uh, what I could uh, out of the car, not knowing that the car had been totaled. Uh, and when I got there, uh, it began to rain. Now understand that I lost my mother and father in the rain. Mm -hmm. It started raining when I got there, and some kind of way I was able to get up on the car and I was feet from where the lifeless bodies of these two young men that, that just had shot at me. Um, and when I walk up, um, <laughs> there was a fireman looked at me and said, you have another story to tell, don't you? And I said, excuse me? I said, do you know me? He said, yeah, I'm the fireman that stretched the ladder out to you uh, when you lost your parents. At that wow. And, and so it lets you wow. know that God wow. is real. And uh, it, it, was a, it was a pretty uh, <laughs> devastating uh, time in my life again. Yeah. But when wow. that happened, it was as if God had said, it's not over. And the odd thing, the book that's, uh, that, that was written, uh, I didn't know how to end that book. Mm -hmm. So the book was ended with to be continued because God said, who are you to put the end on your life? Mm. Um, I have the, I own the blueprints Come on to now. your life. Man, you're going to make me shout right now. On. Come on. So who are you to Come put on. the end on your life? Put mm. to be continued because it's not. Wow. A yeah. Wow. Unbelievable. What a testimony. Mm -hmm. You know, I always say there's a purpose to your pain. Oh, yeah. yeah. There's a purpose to what we go through. Yeah. And I always feel like it's designed to help and bless somebody else. Oh, yeah. When we're able to tell our truth, we're able to set others free. Free. Amen. And Amen. when you're able to tell that truth and give that testimony, you can set some brothers free. Man, that is awesome. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. Now, you've written a book. How do we find out a little bit more about that book and how to reach you? Uh, uh, through, through the Internet. <laughs> through the Internet. Surviving the Storm. Uh, actually, my, I'm, I'm under construction. We're getting it up, okay. but you can contact me through my Facebook. 
Okay. Uh, I, you can email me. That information is on, on my Facebook okay. uh, page. And um, now, I, Facebook is Mike Frazier? Mike, Mike Frazier, yes. Okay. Uh, and I'm, I'm just, man, I'm just excited yeah. about what God is doing and what he has done in, in my life. Uh, um, you, know, you you know you you know I'm a formal music director of Tyler Perry, right? And so coming off the road, releasing the book, mm -hmm. and seeing what God, ha you know, uh, had planned for me, right, has been incredible. Even with the meeting of of, of you two guys, it's just um, have you ever felt in your spirit that God is up to something? Absolutely. Yeah, well, going yeah, into like 20, now. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, like right going, now. going into 2016, yeah. Yeah. I've been saying, I've been posting on Facebook, God is up to something. Expect the unexpected. Mm. Yeah, expect the unexpected. That, that's where I am. I'm expecting the unexpected because I, not, cause I cannot put limitations on what God is about to do in my life. So I'm just expecting the unexpected. There you go. You're just do, riding it out. Do your thing. You do your thing. Yeah. I think that's wonderful. Now, for more information on you, Mr. Clarence. I can be found on uh, Facebook or LinkedIn under my name, Clarence White. Um, and I'm also on Twitter under Conqueror, but that's spelled C-O-N-Q-R-O-R. -O -R. And that comes from the scripture, we're more, we're more than conquerors through Jesus Christ who saves us. And if Christ says I'm more than a conqueror with him, and I must simply be a conqueror without them already. So I don't have to bow my head or be defeated by anything or anyone. So I'm just, a, I'm a conqueror. Go ahead. Well said. Well said. Two positive brothers. Man, thank you all so much for coming on the show. You guys have done an outstanding thank, job. Thank you for having us. Absolutely. Just as I anticipated, it was phenomenal. Yes. Thank you so much. Now, for more information on me and the talk show, you can certainly reach me at Let's Talk About It, 12TV at gmail.com. That's Let's Talk About It, 12TV at gmail.com. You can also go to YouTube and see all of our shows right there for your viewing pleasure. Simply go to YouTube, type in the name Farrell Phelps. All of my shows are right there. All right. Hope you guys enjoyed the show as much as I did. Until next time, we'll see you then.